so this is a continuation from the another video so we'll uh, look how to control the auto, uh, water level tank using the plc program so this includes the sump so if the sump is empty so then uh, this uh, motor should not turn on so that's what we are including in this so first i'm going to insert the rung from the iec standard so this is the rung so then from the electrical control iec standard i'm going to insert the plc cards so this is the input plc card and we have output plc card so first we are going to complete the connections related to this input and output plc card so for the input plc card so we are going to have a switch so one is a normally open toggle switch so which is connected to input zero so this is the start button so i'm going to name it as a start so then i'm going to again insert a normally open toggle switch so at input one so this is a auto so automatic button okay. so then uh, we need a sensor switch so which is a normally open level switch so connected at i3 so this is for top tank lower sensor so and we have a normally open level switch connected at i n5 this is for the level of the sub so and we have one more normally open level switch connected at in7 so this is for the top tank upper sensor so we are going to connect them so i'm going to double click this sensor so and i'm going to connect it to the top tank lower sensor so then send this one top tank upper sensor then this one for the fluid level in the sump so double click this send uh, scroll to the fluid height so fluid height so of this sump okay so I am going to connect all these sensors to the power source of 24 volts. So then 0 volts for the common. So we have completely made the connections related to the input PLC card. Now we are going to look into the output PLC card connections. So for the output PLC card connections, one is a common 0 volts. Then click on output components. I'm going to take a coil, connect it to output zero. So this is for the motor. So and also 24 volts power supply for this coil. The output PLC card connections are also over. So now we are going to complete the ladder programming. So for the ladder program, click on ladder for IC standard. So in that, so I'm going to use a normally open contact. So first I am going to draw the structure of this uh, ladder program and then I am going to place another normal open contact. So after that we have one more normal open contact, another normal open contact, then we have output coil. So output coil name is, so it's like a motor. Then I am going to place normally closed contact. Okay then con connect it like this then at the bottom i am going to take normal closer contact one more normal closer contact and one output coil so the output coil name is empty for latching purpose normal open contact Now I'm going to complete this program by linking. So first I'm going to link this to the start button. So the start button is connected at input 0. Hence I'm going to link it to input 0. IN 0. The second one is the fluid in the sum. Okay. So this is linked to the IN 5.
the next one is for the auto start button start auto, auto start button is at input one so this is ion one if auto start is off okay so then the flow of current will be from here so then um, this is for the empty if uh, it is empty okay then here this is for the top tank lower sensor top tank lower sensor is at in3 this is for upper sensor upper sensor is at in7 in7 is for upper sensor then this is for latching it's empty Now I am going to connect this motor to this output 0. Next, this coil which is named as motor. So I need to operate this motor. So if this one is enabled, output 0 is enabled. So double click this. So and I am going to connect all this to the motor. I will run the simulation click on simulation click on normal simulation button so first we need to start this okay motor uh, start this motor so for starting click on the start button now it is on manual mode since the pump has been turned on in the water level as you can see it has been increased once it reaches this level this sensor is enabled okay so if this sensor is enabled okay uh, that's where the signal goes on in3 is turned on if IN3 is turned on, this one is off. If uh, the water level reaches as the top tank upper sensor, so then uh, this one is turned on. If this one is turned on, IN7, then this one is going to turn off. Since uh, it will be not empty, so if it is not empty, so then uh, this one is going to turn off, then uh, the motor is going to switch off. If it is in automatic mode, now it is in manual, this one, uh, the signal is bypassing this loop and it's going from here so i'm going to switch to automatic if you want to increase the speed of the motor click on the motor then you can increase the rpm for simulation purpose as you can see when this one sensed automatically it turned off the motor if you want to increase the speed of the fluid draining from this tank so just you can turn on this one and also there is one more throttle one so you can open this valve also for manual if you turn off again this is going to turn on as you can see here also the level of the liquid in the sump is also decreasing so i'm going to just increase the speed of this pump as you can see it's decreasing so i'm going to switch to manual sorry i switch it to automatic so the only thing is if there is no water in this sump it should turn off that's what the case is so once it reaches this uh, low level sensor it should again turn on if it is in automatic so here uh, once it it's going to reach this lower sensor so the lower sensor is going to turn off the signal in3 is off if in3 is off this is a normal closed okay the signal will pass from here and again it will be empty so this empty is going to just switch on this and it's going to start the motor as you can see here yes the motor has been start it's again filling here once it reaches the bottom and when the water is empty in the sump so it's going to turn off this ion5 if ion5 is off the signal is broken here sign so the as you can see the motor is off